Good evening. Welcome to the North End Public Safety Meeting. Uh, we have a lot of guests tonight. Uh, uh, first of all, we have uh, Boston City Council Salah Martina. We come to the floor. We have Carol McNeil from our Neighborhood Watch Unit from the Boston Police Department. We have Rich Grealish from Suffolk University. He's the liaison that goes off with us on the weekend. Uh, we all know Teddy Boyle, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to our Captain Tom Lee. First of all, Thank you very much. And thank you for last month's more welcome to the North <laughs> But I'm back. Just as a follow-up, I know that most people know that we have increased patrols on Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. They are on the Hanover Street, and they have been out there. Patrols is a two officer patrol, and it's the last, well, the last couple of weekends since, since we had the uh, last meeting. So they've been out there, they're taking enforcement action. Now, I'm not going to list all, through all the enforcement action taken. I think some people know things have been taken. There's been students cited. There's been at least, we, we did have an arrest. We had several, we call FIOs, well, we probably have more than a dozen FIOs, which we, we, we take and record your name for future police action if, if there is any. Also, city ordinance violations. So, a lot's been done on the enforcement side. This is not going to be a simple, okay, the police came out one time and that's the end of it. We know that. We're going to keep working at it. We're going to keep working at it with the community and hearing from you folks where the problems are. We're out doing follow ups. I know Tommy Lima from the CSO's office has personally visited some of the homes where the parties have been held. So, that's, that is also taking place as one of the steps. And before we get into everything we've done, <coughs> Sal Lamartine, our city councilor, is working closely with us. I'm going to let Sal talk a little bit about the problem properties and how we're working on that with, with the landlords. And I know Sal's got another event he has to attend, so I want to just open up quickly with that. We are going to talk some more noise issues, but first I want to let Sal uh, address the property. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Captain Walton. Thank you, Sal. Uh, and I have to say, since me with the captain, and I missed your last meeting uh, a month ago, but I met with the captain a few days after that. And walking around the North End, have seen more police officers, have seen white tickets on, on resident parking, which means it's Boston police and Italian resident parking, and have seen motorcycle police officers, and I have seen walking beat since I met with the captain. So I want to commend the captain. This is a great turnout. And we should be meeting like this once a month. It shouldn't be every time there's an issue that everyone comes and they want to beat up the captain or me. We should be here, and I don't mind taking my meetings, but, <laughs> but Captain, I had the same experience as you my first meeting in the North End. It was about Hanover Street, and uh, it was great. <laughs> we did too. And you have memories in politics, and that will always be one of my favorite memories, my first meeting at the Neighborhood Council um, after leaving it six years ago. <laughs> but I need your help. You're here today. We have a problem property task force, and we've been doing this now for four years. Four years with Suffolk University, uh, Emerson College, the police, Representative Mikeowitz, um, residents from Beacon Hill. We have some residents from the North End that participated. We need people from the North End to join us and help us on this task force. I don't know if there's any volunteers. We meet either third or the fourth um, Tuesday. Help hard. Huh? Help hard. Help hard. Well, you join the task force and you give us the information. You need to give us the information. And um, Sergeant Lewis, he has a list of things that we've been working on um, for the past four years. When we get a complaint, they go there. We talk to landlords. We call landlords. We we send them letters uh, and we communicate with them. And, and, and I, we see, once you communicate with some of these landlords, we see a difference. But we need to know. You know, um, Suffolk University, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, they have a paid detail. Richard Grealish is out there with them. And we have a number. Does everyone have their number for their hotline? If you have your pen, please write this down. On your cell phone is 617 549 
7503. And that's Suffolk University's office. And, and there's a new president. And John Mucci actually would have been here, the vice president of Suffolk University. But today's his 60th birthday party, and that's why I'm leaving early because they're having a party for him tonight. But he would have been here tonight. It's not going to be a loud party. I don't know if this is going to be a loud party. It's 60 to be ending early. Yeah, at 60, I'm sure it'll be ending early. Yeah. But we meet there, and uh, we have made a, uh, I want to say, a lot of progress in, in the last few years um, with Suffolk University. If you report it, they have to see the dean. They have to see Richard, and they have to go see the dean. Now, the new president, he's really in it. He came from the University of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, yeah. he's really strict. Thanks, you know what I mean? He's going to hold the students accountable for their actions in the neighborhood. But it's only going to work now. It only can work with your help. If you see it, you're going to report it. We have a new captain here, and i got to give him a lot of credit. Because uh, he, he's new here. He wants to get involved in the neighborhood. So we need to work with the captain. And, and you show me by your actions that I'm seeing the police out there. Um, if you're saying you're not seeing the police, you're going to be out there at 12 o'clock or after 12 o'clock. Because he, he's been out there. I mean, 3.30. He's there until 3.30. But is it only on Hanover Street or are they patrolling? It's over yeah. where I am. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. And I'm on Fulton Street. Yeah. So I've got the Fisherman's Club and yeah. their functions, yeah. and all these kids have come out of the bars, I don't know if it's the yeah. wharf or where, they come up the street in gangs, yeah. and they rip my flowers yeah. out of the box, mangle my shrubs, yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah. So, listen, you need to, first of all, always call 911. All right, so you have two numbers, 911, so they make a record of it, so it's recorded. Their police officers are here, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights in the North End. So if you call, they could assign someone to your call. So they're here. Suffolk University is here. Now, um, Sergeant Lee will tell you, give you a report, and we can list the names of the, uh, the problem properties that we have here in the North End, and <coughs> tell you some of the things, actions that we have taken. But it's up to you. I mean, I don't know if there's any volunteers here. Well, how can I go out at 12.30? No, no, I'm talking about, <laughs> but listen, if you Patrol. see it, listen, if you see it, you get to report it. So we have a list. And I would love someone from the neighborhood to participate when we meet at City Hall. And we have some people from Beacon Hill. We've been doing it at Beacon Hill. As you know, more and more people now, Thank students are moving to the North Hall. <laughs> Um, it's, not just, it's, not, it's not just the students. Everyone blames the students. And listen, we, listen, we, we can control the students. With our problem probably task force, we have a good relationship with Suffolk University and what they're doing. Then we could, for the most part, control the students. You know, but the young urban professionals that live in the neighborhood, yes. that's it's different. And every year, listen, I've been working in this neighborhood now for 25 years. And I've been hearing this 25 years ago, and they, maybe you can tell me. Maybe they used to yell in the streets, Anthony, and all this yeah. stuff. 25 years ago, I used to hear this. And I don't have to, I have to, I'm gonna be honest with you. And the North End, the population in the North End, every year is gonna probably get younger and younger. That's reality. These young professionals, they're gonna come here, they're gonna move here as older people move out uh, and move on. They're gonna rent these apartments. This is our not then. That's what's going to happen. But we need to educate these new people that, that move here that this is a neighborhood and we have to respect each other. You know, and I'm hoping now with the new captain, with the commitment from Suffolk University that we'll be able to do that. Uh, Jen, I'll be glad to take any questions or concerns in regards to the problem probably task force some of the things that we're doing. Go ahead, Jen. Uh, like the lady said, mm -hmm. about Fulton Street. Sometimes it's a group of people that come. They, they stay maybe 10 minutes, yeah. and then they, they may leave. move on. Yeah. It's a natural way to go out. Yeah. But by the time you think of calling the police or something,
So they come in from the bars and Fiona Hall and whatever, and they walk in home at night time. And, and these are our residents. I mean, they live here. So it's just, it's working with the police, being out on the street, and when they're coming home at night, talking to them and say, listen, you, you got a neighborhood that's sleeping. And it's loud here, because we're all in this close neighborhood, and you, the voice is echo. And that's some of the issues over here. Marie, I know you have a lot of concerns. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I know I, that. I, I, mm. My concern I, is that yeah. you know I got a letter saying yeah. the party was in my building when the complaint came. We made one mistake, Marie. But no, no, it wasn't no, one, no. Sal. Right, Wait a minute, let me finish. Uh, I don't right, want to get crazy. All right, get crazy. When Michelle <laughs> turns around and calls up saying the city of Boston yep. was making a fixing a light fixture outside the house, the lamppost. Yep. They had the party going on in Michelle's building. Now that's twice in a year. I consider the, there's somebody Great. not doing the job yeah. yourself. Yeah. That's number one. Great. Then at quarter past two in the morning, my husband witnessed the guy kicking the door yes. and the officer gave him a slap on the wrist and let him go. Right. It can't be done. Right. Right. How long ago was that, Marie? Saturday night, April 28th. Last week was? That's right. Did you report April that? April 28th. Every, they got okay. everything. All right. they all right, so there's a report. That's all my there's a report. So, anyways, if you show the letter, here's, I mean, yeah. we do, listen. Telling me the party was in my building. But listen, and, and, and we're sorry, we, we made a mistake. Oh, wow. But listen, we made a mistake. Yeah, but you made a mistake with her too. Wait, listen, listen. And, and her so, wait, we, we made a mistake. All right, yeah, we made a mistake. But this is some of the things that we're doing. All right, so, I mean, help us out a little over here. It's easy to come here, listen. All the assets, we need some help. We're out there. You need to call it in. He's here. The police is here. No, what's he doing? He's here. He, listen, they drive around, but you're going to call. You wake me up a second. Well, they're here. They're here. David, David. Oh, and here's your other one. Save this one. Save it. Thanks for saving it. Might be a silver nail one day. David. What I did has been done. Yes, I what I did has been bandied about at several uh, at past public safety meetings was talking yeah. to maybe trying to get the North End landlords, those that, of course, that are not absentee landlords, I don't yeah. know what percentage of all landlords are absentee, but yeah. and, and if, there's, if this would be any good, have them, maybe it's like a mandatory, it's not a session or a training session, but some type of conversation or some type of hard and fast rules maybe written into the lease, not to say that they don't really have that. Yeah. But just to try and press upon the tenants that I'm not messing around. We expect a certain decorum, a certain type of behavior. I don't really know if what the landlords do. So some landlords, some landlords do that in the lease. Right. So we got to be in the lease. Yeah, yeah. in the lease. Yeah. So yeah. Some landlords, and, and that's Mission Hill. Does yeah, that. and Mission Hill does that, and we just Hill does that. Uh, probably do that. But we're we've been trying to at least listen. We've been trying to call up the landlords, work with landlords. Calling residents, knocking on their doors if they're having parties. We're out there responding. It's a big issue. It's a big issue. Like I said, it's just more and more young people moving here. And I was 24 years old when I first got out of college, and I'm sure I was partying too. And I'm sure your kids were, and you were too, when you're uh, age. So, no, you're right. It's different. You gotta respect. You gotta respect. You gotta, and you gotta respect the neighborhood. So listen, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking for volunteers. You're welcome. All I can tell you is keep on calling. We have a new captain here who will be accountable. And you guys gotta come. Look at this. Is this is great? It's the third. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a third third um, Tuesday, eight forty five at City Hall in the Curly Room AM in the morning. We have ISD there, the special service department. Okay. We have the police there and we have the universities there. Yeah, but when people work so that's an odd time. I mean I can't take every third Going late every third, Thursday. Yeah. 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 We've been we've been doing it like that. I'm gonna turn over to the captain. Um, hey Sal, before you're done, yes. what is the disciplinary process for the for the problem landlords? Because if there's no if there's no protocol, there's not yeah. going to be a solution. Well, we we issue a police complaint. 
Yeah, same wow. as a court housing court. Oh, okay. So we, they all court. Okay. Yeah, how many times? Can I just mention that, um, yeah, but, uh, again, Carolyn McNeil, Boston Police, there is, just so all of you know, uh, because I've been working on this for years, I also do a lot of the college stuff, and I've been doing it for years. There is a coalition of all of the local colleges and universities. It's the Off-Campus Housing and Student Coalition. We meet once a month to address all of these issues. All of the all of the colleges are involved. There's a representative from the mayor's office, inspectional services, um, and so on and so forth. And I, I can give you more information, but we've been meeting regularly to sort of do best practices, issues in the Fenway, Mission Hill, um, and again, and, and we're, this is sort of new to this area. I can tell you Mission Hill's been dealing with it for years, Fenway years. So there are some things that they've been doing, best practices that I can share with, you know, you or uh, a representative from, you know, this neighborhood or whatever um, that, that they're doing. Like, and I'll just give an example, brief example. Mission Hill residents have made it a point when on move-in day, when those students are moving in, to help out. And they are volunteering, they're welcoming the students, and they're also telling, meeting the parents that day. You have an opportunity to meet those kids and meet the students and say, look at this is our neighborhood. So we do that, and it doesn't even work because they give it. That's just one. So I'm just going to say there is a coalition that's been meeting for years that deals with these issues. But this is new to this area. Are you familiar with what they do in Brookline? Are you familiar with how they handle things in Brookline? It's not under the mayor's jurisdiction at all. Are you familiar? Did anybody share that information with you? Because I gave it to these police officers last month. Brookline, the landlord gets a fine, the tenant gets a fine, and they have everything under control. So the bottom line is you gotta hit them in the pocket, and if you don't do it, we're never solving this problem. Not $25, hit them with 100 and up. Oh yes, Captain. Oh, really? Do we have that? That's a different city. I know, know it's a different city. We don't have works. that law on our jurisdiction, so it has to be approved by the city council to move on. But they have it. Sal has it. So we, yeah, we don't have that in front of us to deal with, Marie. What we have, what we have. Now, last meeting, we talked a lot about Suffolk University. And we promised we'd bring somebody from Suffolk University out here to address the community on the issues regarding students. And I have to say that Rich has been out there, he's personally out there. Suffolk University pays for another, besides the extra patrol the police had put on, they pay for an overtime patrol to have Boston Police and there's two officers and a sergeant, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. No, no, this is all over for noise complaints. This is what we call the party car, you know, we call it ourselves the party car. Yes, but I want to give Rich the opportunity to talk a little bit about it, what they've done. I'll talk a little and listen a lot. Um, the university is out there. We understand we're part of the neighborhood, and we do take responsibility for how our students conduct themselves. I'm out actively patrolling with the police every weekend throughout the school year. When we encounter our students, I identify them, I submit a report to our Dean of Student Affairs, and they are disciplined. We very rarely have a second offender. The problem that we run into as an institution is a lot of the places we go to, it's not Suffolk students. There are other schools that do have kids living in the neighborhood. We have our hands tied. When it's Suffolk kids, we handle them very quickly and very thoroughly in our disciplinary system. But when I'm running into kids from Emerson College, I do inform them, you know, these are Emerson students, this is what they were doing and you need to do something about it. Or if it's Harvard University, this is what we find. 25 students, he's got the names from yeah. yeah. Harvard yeah. University yeah. students. So it's not always yeah. something. Yeah. But if, if, if we would, we, kids coming up, are you gonna ask them? We, anybody who says they don't have an ID, we tell them we are taking them to the police station because the assumption is you're 17 years old, you're drunk, and you need to be, your parents need to be called and that pretty quickly produces some form of identification, <laughs> or they actually end up at the police station and their parents get called. So we take it very seriously. Um, but like I said, our hands are tied when it comes to dealing with certain groups, but if you pick up the phone and call, we will always respond. We will end any party that we find, no matter who's hosting it, whether it's these young professionals who are moving into the neighborhood, whether it's another institution, or especially if it's Suffolk University. We take it seriously. We want to make sure they're not disturbing 
your quiet enjoyment of the neighborhood, but you have to call 911 and you have to call the university hotline. So I, and you mentioned Fulton Street. We're on Fulton Street every night. We, there's, there's a series of buildings that we check every evening throughout the neighborhood. We don't spend a lot of time on Hanover Street, to be honest with you, because there's so many businesses on Hanover Street, it's always going to be loud. But in the areas that are quieter, like uh, Endicott Street, um, along those areas, we patrol them a lot. So we try to get to every party we get calls for, but if you don't call, we're not going to be able to respond. So and it's not always college students. No. No, 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 it's right. no, no. It isn't. No. Right. There's a lot. There's a lot of agree with you. Yeah. There's a lot of young professionals who push people out. Yeah. And the officer came out two weeks ago on a long Saturday. When I tell you, I called at eight thirty. By nine, they were pushed up and out of there. And I made them know I was on that call. So next time you go to have a party, they'll think twice. But the cop said he was going to come back in ten minutes, and he did. Oh yeah, I told him get out. That's good. He did. And, and the and police are very good. Students. They're very good at any of these parties. But and that's I mean, the first time to I a called. degree, their hands are tied. They can write a ticket. You're right. But beyond that, so there's very little the that they can do to, to, to dissuade. They came in a speedy time. He did come back in ten minutes. He was on foot, and it took him ten minutes to get into the apartment because it was so noisy. But he did come back, and they didn't stop the party up again, and they weren't students. A lot so of times, too, the 911 operators, when you do call that early, will say, but it's early. It's early. She and did say, I know what happened. I tell them, well, we were yeah. told to call no matter what time it is. Right. What, what time did you call? Oh, she Saturday. called at 830. I called at 930. No, no, no. Yeah. My cousin called at 1230 on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. And they came. No. I'll give you, I'll give you an example of an outreach address, 61 Prince Street, woman lived up, I think, at a, well, I'm not even going to say the apartment, I'm not even going to say the apartment, she was kind of like, she a, a couple of apartments up there, uh, myself up to Wongo, uh, we decided to take a visit, first unit had two 25-year-old guys, uh, probably about 12 pizza boxes, they had a party the night before, they had all their buddies over there watching, I don't know if it was the first game of the Bruins, it was some sort of a, big game. It didn't go to late at night, but unfortunately the woman lived next door, I believe, with her husband. Down the hall was a, two other guys, 25 years old. Uh, the sharp guy seemed to have all the answers, so I knew he was kind of a troublemaker. But he insisted they wouldn't have any more parties. Now, from our knowledge, it's been relatively... Yes, we've had three okay. quiet weekends, yeah. and we're so thankful you all responded, and Aaron Michaelitz's Thank office you. responded. And the captain well, my, also thank you. Too. My point to the whole thing is that, you know, we get alerted to a particular address, we do make a house call, mm -hmm. we do speak to the tenants. <laughs> the, the, the database reflects that on the six last loud party calls we got, four out of six of them we call YPs, Teddy come up with that, young professionals. It's not, we, we get more, and I mentioned this last year, two thirds of all of our uh, uh, problem property locations were actually young professionals. Now, when we go to that, say, that particular address, we're hoping that the behavior changes, the music ends a lot earlier, they're not having as big a party, and we kind of, you know, we kind of go through the whole process of what disturbing the peace is, being a disorderly person, maybe writing them up to being the keeper of a disorderly house. So again, on something like that, that might be a first time occasion. So I mean, we're not gonna go up there like lions because they had a party. We were alerted to that location, we went up there, we talked to them, so for three weeks it's been relatively quiet. Right. That's sort of the experience we have. I, I think to kind of go a little bit further with Rich Grealish, you know, we go to all the orientations with the freshmen, we've been doing that for four years now. We go through at least a, I think we do a, a full hour of orientation, we do, we do 1,400 kids, and we really talk about progressive discipline, what it means to go before the dean of students, having your parents notified, the possibility of uh, being suspended, uh, you know, thrown out of the school, uh, losing your housing off campus, the uh, disciplinary forms that they have to sign. So, and as I've mentioned before, a lot of these different addresses, we aren't getting a lot of repeat calls for that also. For all the new people, what we're seeing more of is we're seeing a lot more noise in the street and less calls to the apartments, and that's one of the big issues we've been dealing with lately. Last week, thank you. I have a question. Yes. Um, last week, I Across the street, 68th Street, I called several times. I was woken up at three in the morning. I don't know if you're students. I'm not saying that they are. But the police came. They came twice and they couldn't get into the building because there's a gate. And what happens in that circumstance? Do they try to locate? I don't know if they're students, but I 
If there's a number listed on the plate, you call the number because typically it might be uh, somebody who's doing the building superintendent work and they can come let us in. Um, but sometimes, on rare occasions, we we're not able to get in and we try a lot of different things. Um, flashing the windows with a flashlight. They did all that. Yeah. This, this thing is going on from quarter three so I think it was six o'clock in the morning. So it was I, I got up late for work the next day. They, did, they wrote a report on that. I know they wrote a report on that. Yeah. On that. So we're going to go back the next day. And we're going to we, we go back the next night. If it's, if it's on a Thursday or Friday, we we'll go back on Saturday. And then if it's on a Saturday night, we just put it on the list and check they it out. They actually called me to ask me to let them into the program. I had my name in the you know, I, I, don't, I don't think we've done the follow-up to the visit yet, but we have the report on it. We definitely will. We did have a unit go up there at 3.32 in the morning. Are you, yes. They did they 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 have, uh, they have a 12 call, which means they cleared at, at that particular point. They, they, well, we'll have to talk to the officers. Okay. Yeah, I guess they'll have to do it. Oh, do all right, just while we're on a lull, I just want to just mention this real quick, just on the calls. And this is sort of important to uh, follow the line. I need my glasses. So, okay, so the college kids move in in September. I want to go back to September. So in September, even with the orientation, uh, we took 30, 36 911 calls from sort of disruptive behavior, disturbances, loud parties, loud music, uh, different categories uh, if it's drunken behavior. So we, we actually go through every single 911 call, every single call in the North End, and then we document if it has anything to do with uh, again, parties, loud music. So, and as we always see at the beginning of the year, we, we're going to get a lot of calls. Um, in the month of October, it went down to 19 calls. For the month of November, believe it or not, it went down to 7. Um, but December went down, it went to 16. January was 9. Most kids are out of school back then. Uh, 12 calls, actually only 3 calls in uh, February, 12 calls in March. Um, and for the month of April, we had 19 calls. So I just said that 19 calls is significant. Uh, I, I prefer that you call 911 a lot more. It wouldn't bother me if this went up to 40 calls every month or 50 calls. What it's saying is that you're paying attention and you are calling 911. We take 74,000 radio calls on our district. 85% of them are service related. Well, it has to do with homelessness. And they're not then. What we're really taking is loud, loud music, disturbance type calls. Those are the types of calls that reflects on the police reports when we report out as to how many robberies, sexual assaults, if we have any homicides, which we don't break an entry, but the vast majority of the calls are quality of life issues. So I think what we're trying to really communicate uh, more than anything is that if you if you have any type of thing going on, uh, whether it's two seconds or if you get a good description, get that information out there to the 911 dispatch, and when the police do show up, they, they'll drive around the area, see if they can you know find those particular kids and, and have a discussion with them. If it's just loud conversation outside, uh, that does become a big deal. When, when the Beacon Hill uh, person shows up at our orientations, that's all they talk about. It's not the parties. It's they congregate outside. They, they actually have this one woman that talks about dirt, trees, and leaves, and grass. And that all of that stuff absorbs sound, but when you're up at Beacon Hill, it's all cement. It's all sidewalk and brick. And every conversation you have, even if it's soft conversation, it'll rebound off those walls and you'll hear it in your fourth floor window. Yeah. So that's the big thing they stress up on the hill. They don't even talk about, we don't even talk about parties anymore. Uh, big problematic properties, I'm not saying that they've disappeared, but we've had a drastic change of behavior, but it has a lot to do with the noise on the street. Yes, yeah, sir, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I tried to get... Council Ramatina before he left, but I just wanted to let the meeting know that at the newer meeting on the 12th of April, we did ask Council Lamatina about this question that Marie had raised about um, <clears throat> zero tolerance and following Brookline's example uh, to, to assess penalties on both landlords and, and noisy tenants. And Council Lamatina at that time said that he, he was researching it. So I'm I hope he comes back because I think we need to ask him what's the progress on the research. Well, I can speak on that if you'd like me. Yeah, I would. Yeah, we, we have researched it, and currently, right now, it's um, 
we haven't filed an order for a hearing yet, but we're, res we're still researching with the legislative department. And um, currently right now, we have a redistricting, pro a redistricting process going on in the city of Boston that has taken up a lot of their energy and they're a little short staffed. And we have looked at the town of Brooklines and we are comparing it with the current ordinance we have for the city of Boston, which is dated probably back to the late 70s, early 80s. So we're either A, going to amend the current one we have, or we're going to just blow up the one we have and file a brand new one. So um, to answer your question, we're probably a little further along in the research, but we haven't had some set a date, uh, or we don't have anything in writing currently. <coughs> Do you have any sense? I'm, I'm, I'm not doubting you. And I have spoken I'm personally. With, I have spoken personally with the city of um, the town of Brookline. I've spoken with their building inspectors. I, I, I've, I've spoken very frequently with people in the town of Brookline. And, and, and it is it is a pretty good it is a pretty good zero tolerance ordinance. But it hasn't solved all their problems. But no, it, no. It, it is a lot better than the, than the current the ordinance we have now. That's right. And there are other community, there are other cities in this, in this, in this in the Commonwealth, such as Salem, who also have a, a slightly different zero tolerance policy. So I was just hoping I'm glad to see Councilor Montalamantine come back because I'm hoping that at, the, at these different kinds of meetings that we keep having here, <laughs> that he can have it as an update point for everybody to say, here's where we're going with it. Here's the time frame we expect. Here's what we hope will come out of it and stuff like that. Because I think the community does want to work with the elected representatives. And I think that part of the problem has been, that, at least I have felt, that the elected, rep elected representatives don't really think it's a serious problem the way the residents do. But, I mean, if we can agree on that, if we can converge on that, then, then that's good. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if I didn't think it was a serious problem, we wouldn't have this task force that we fought. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would. If I didn't think it was a serious problem, we would have this task force that we've been meeting and addressing these issues. I, I personally think we made a lot of progress here in the last four years to address um, the issue of the college students. To say, let me take this credit and the and Mike Ross's credit. They did put together this task we force. We put this together. We got Suffolk down. I mean Suffolk Downs. <laughs> 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 That's another issue on the other side of the it certainly is. that I'm dealing with. But uh, listen, I take this serious, noise serious. I grew up in a three family house, you know what I mean? And, and when you listen to loud parties, and we have some of those issues on the other side of the tunnel, on um, the other side. But this, we don't have that on the other side, we have it here. You know, Mike Ross and myself, we, we heard the issues in the North End. I mean, I have the other side of Beacon Hill, and he has a big portion of Beacon Hill. But we've got everybody in the room together, addressing the parties and the rules. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's not like I don't care about those issues. Those are big issues for me. If I didn't care, I wouldn't be here today. I care. Mm -hmm. You know, and these people here, I care. But I need your help. I need people to call 911 and to keep, to hold the police accountable. And Captain and Captain Lee is here. I mean, in the past, right, at these public safety meetings, you might get five people. You know, five people because it's on the news today or it was last month. You know, I mean, people are showing up. But you got to be here. The captain needs okay, to hear it. So I appreciate you people being here. And we will, we're looking at that and yeah, see if, if it will work. I don't know if it will work, but we'll, well no, look at it. Fair enough. I think actually part of the reason that there's more, it is partly due to it being more, more of a noticeable problem, but I think it actually is getting worse. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I believe there's a every, 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 I believe there's a every year, and it's but definitely you're right. getting worse. But you said that every year is getting worse. Because every year the population here is changing. It's getting younger and younger. You heard Kim. Yeah. Kim said these yeah. are owners. These are owners that young professional. They're living here now. This is this is the new North End. People sell their You know what I mean? They're selling their properties. Their realtors are they're selling. I mean, they're renting these apartments. People want to come to the North End. It's the greatest it's neighborhood safe. in America. It's it's yeah, yeah. Hey, it's Sal. It's, yeah, Sal. It's Sal. Sal. Brian, you, well, you need yes, to make yes, your yes. legacy if you're on the way out, which God, you know, forbid. I, I wish you luck, but I also want you to say, <laughs> you, you need to make it your legacy in this neighborhood that yes. you came up with an ordinance, yeah. you came up with better paper yeah. and better discipline. Because if you do that, okay, that is a manifestation. I do think you, yeah. you care. Uh, to be a manifestation of all the care and the hard work that you've done, if we can get something. And I know Steve worked very hard on the stuff that was brought up last week, too. So if you guys can get something on paper before you leave us, that would leave us with something tangible that we can use after you're gone. Yeah. And that would become your legacy. 
So. The Lord is on us. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Listen, just to give the captain a chance. He's been here for less than two months, and um, I really feel good with this captain here. Um, I see it. So thank you. Well, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just one thing to also, the, uh, the mayor is very concerned about this also. I mean, I know he is. His office is contacted me today. They want to make sure that the situation is being addressed. They're looking to see if there has been an increase. We're trying to get a tracking on calls. The mayor is personally concerned with what's happening in North End. I don't want you to think yeah. he is. Okay? He is. Hi. I've owned my building for 30 years. Um, the other night, Friday night, I wasn't home. We were away. There were only two people home in the entire building. Um, three guys came to our front door, were ringing all the bells, smashing the front window, smashed it on Endicott Street. Street. One, um, the police came, one of the guys that was in our building was able to identify. They took his license and let him go. Exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. So there were three guys that took off. They smashed, the, they smashed our window in. And, the they door. Doing and we're trying to break open the door. We're bodily banging yeah. the door, trying to break the door open. Um, you know, I, I, why did they just what take his know? license? The guy identified him. He was one of the three guys. They took his license and let him go. And, and, and yes, our building, and we've been there for 30 years. We are not absentee landlords. We are owners. We are there. We live there. We brought up our children there. And our building is listed as a party building. Not once. <laughs> not once. Join the club. We're on a party building list. We, we Googled our building. One of five in the North End. That we're listed as our next door neighbor is. Uh, we have a lot of issues with our next door neighbor, but our there. number They were is looking listed. for a party at the wrong apartment. Oh, yeah. Why am I, when I they took my building, names. I'm we, listed as a party building? The detectives are going to follow up. We have them identified. I'm not sure why the officers didn't decide to arrest them at that time. They, I know they were trying to get into the wrong house, apparently. Uh, apparently. Wrong. I'm looking for a party. <laughs> I mean, no, they were yelling, and they were yelling racial epithets. Yeah, that's right. And that's right. They were. It wasn't. It wasn't pretty. My two children are petrified right now. Petrified. Was the guy living there not then? Once he took his license, or you don't know. I personally don't Sir, know. We had the same thing, something similar <laughs> happened in our building on um, four or five days ago. I did call 911 on Charter Street. But we had a, a young woman, it wasn't as violent as that, but this young woman had some kind of a complaint with somebody and she started screaming about 2.30 uh, in the morning out in the street. And she went and rang our bell and rang our bell and rang our bell. And so we kept yelling, Todd, you have to take me in. Todd, you have to do this and that. I don't know who Todd is, but I'm not Todd. He doesn't live in our place. So I'm just saying, I, I think that that's also becoming more frequent. It's random ringings of doorbells. Yeah, they're looking for parties to go. Yeah. We did respond to that at 2.32 in the morning. Uh, we did have two officers that responded. But if something happened to them, they think twice maybe before they back. You give them a ticket? Well, again, when we respond, you know, it all depends on what's going on. Are they at the level of being a, a disorderly person? Are they at that point disturbing the peace? Have they committed, quote, a vandalism in our presence? Have we, did we actually witness that? If, if, you, if, right if, an, if an assault has already happened, we don't have the right of arrest unless we're actually there when the assault and battery takes place. There's certain <laughs> things we can arrest on scene. Now, somebody is flipping out and, you know, three or four people call 911. We get there and the person is sort of relaxed and calm. We don't have that right to now walk up for disturbing the peace and or disorderly person. Some of those uh, misdemeanor laws, you know, we have to, it has to be in our presence. So in that given situation, we might do a field interrogation observation. On, on that particular um, um, call on the end of the street, we did file a vandalism report. We do have um, um, specific information on the report. Uh, so again, it all depends on the situations. Um, and when you hear stuff like that, you know, I, I would say as a community, you know, that a, a lot of people call 911. Sometimes you have that one call and you get that one flash on the screen. If you have multiple calls, then sometimes the, dis the dispatcher will pick that right up and say, I'm getting three or four calls on this uh, loud group. Can we get a couple of cars down there on the next time? So if the group disperses, we have the ability to try and, you know, uh, try and go both ways on the group. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, yeah. I have, a, I have a suggestion that doesn't address the 25-year-old problem. 
but it may address the college students' problem. Can the coalition of colleges supply to the community a list of the addresses where their students are living? Not the names, but just the addresses, so that if if there's a, a party on your street, you know whether it's a Suffolk party or an Emerson party, and you can call Suffolk or, Mer or Emerson. It's a federal law uh, is designed to protect people from finding out where somebody lives if they're, if they're attending a college or a university because a young woman was murdered in her apartment by somebody who was stalking her. So colleges and universities cannot supply you addresses where students live, even if they don't give you the names of students. Okay. It's a privacy issue and it's a safety issue. <coughs> Internally, we do gather that information so we know for fairly certain where our students are living. We are not allowed to give that information out to anybody. All right, we're good. Rich, I just have to tell you, you're doing a great job. You are not the problem. <laughs> you are not the problem. Unless you know the that's it. If, it's, if we, okay, Captain, I don't want to fight with you. You're the new kid on the block. We've been doing this for 10 years or better. So if we're on rig, we have every reason to be. Sergeant, I'm not saying you're not doing the job. Nobody, what do we have to say? We have cameras? Should we have cameras outside? Would that be good enough I proof? Like would that. somebody I mean, like say destroying her property? If my kid, if I had a camera outside the building, would that be good enough for you guys? To what make an arrest? Because I want to know, is that camera? I'm glad you brought okay. that up, Marie. Really. Because last, last meeting, we discussed crime watches, neighborhood watch. Remember? Yes. We discussed yeah. that and it was asked, could we bring somebody to speak about it? Now I brought Carolyn McNeil who runs our neighborhood watch program. We don't call it Crime Watch anymore. So Carolyn's going to talk a little bit about the program and how to get it going. Okay, Carolyn? Sure. Um, I, I don't supply cameras, but I do think those are a great idea. I mean, if people want to invest in them, I mean, you know, I, I mean, we've solved lots of crimes with people that have cameras either on their houses the or so whatever. Lighting, cameras, and that kind of thing. But so I'll just talk briefly. This is a big group, and so we've been in existence 29 years. I know I've spoken about this. I mean, 29 years. I'm sure other people have been from our unit to, to go out and talk to you. Um, we've talked an awful lot about what the police are doing and what what the police <coughs> can do. And to some extent, in Suffolk, their hands are they're tied. They're going to do as much as they possibly can do with the resources that they have to try to address it. Nothing works better than eyes and ears on the street and people calling in a coordinated effort, okay? So the Neighborhood Watch is a block by block organized way of, of interacting, communicating, and dealing with the crime on your street. It's getting you, it's not only you know, you've heard everybody here say calling 911, but it's a coordinated effort, getting everybody's email or as many people as possible, homeowners on the street, uh, their emails and their and their phone numbers, and creating um, an email, you know, an email chain or a phone phone tree. What we call a phone tree. I mean, as old as the hills sounds hokey, but the number of calls, the, the, as the number of calls increase, like. Sergeant said that 911 operator is going to say, you know what? Not one person's calling. Ten people on that block are calling. We've got a problem. We've got to send some up. And I will say, if more people are calling, there's more offices going to that. You're going to get more resources, you know, if if they're available. So, um, so it's a it's a it's a coordinated effort. It's it's really a shared it's a shared effort to to deter and reduce crime um, and the fear of crime in your neighborhood. Um, so if, if people, residents, you can, you know, we can all point the finger and say, and, and everybody can do a much better job, but it really, it, it really takes a concerted effort of, of residents. But and I, I don't know what exactly you mean. What can I do? You know, so, the problem okay. is from 12.30 until 3.30 in the morning. Okay. I'm gonna go out and walk No, 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 no. You know? No, there, some groups function in different ways. I will tell you. So it, you said to me, how can I, I want to start a neighborhood watch group. I want to get more involved. I want this problem to go away, or at least I want to take an active role. So with my help, we would fly you your block, 
go talk to some neighbors, knock on doors, I'm happy to do it with you and say, look at, there's a noise problem, I want to host a little get together in my living room next Tuesday night, would you be willing to come? You don't even have to throw on coffee, you throw on coffee, I, it doesn't matter how many people, one, two, ten people, you just, you know, and then you start talking about the issues, how we can create a more coordinated effort, rather, and, and, and keep people in the know. You called 911 last Friday. How many of your neighbors, did they know that you called? Them? It's like creating, creating, uh, getting people more in the know of what's going on. I called, you yeah. call, we all call. What I'm getting are people coming back from Brenda Hall or the right. waterfront. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely wild. Right. Um, every other word is the F-bomb. Yep. And they're just meandering around and screaming. Yeah, screaming. And, and then they go on, and then they go this way, and it's... it's the minute you hear it, calling 911. And then that operator is going to ask you, they might not be there in five or ten minutes when the office is, but they're going to ask you what their direction was. You can say, I hear or I see about ten people. Um, they, they, you know, they were going west on such and such street or whatever. Um, and try to pick out as much detail, even if it's one person that has a red yeah, what's, coat what's, on, what's you know. Um, you, get up, you get up to go to the bathroom, even if you're not, you know, waking up. Um, and you look out well, the I, window. I every Here morning, it comes. Every morning at 2.30 and I'm up until 4.30. So it is ratcheted up like you wouldn't believe. And also, it kind of ties in with the attitude of these kids. It's disorderly conduct. My car has been vandalized five times in the last two years. Four times, separate occasions have been keyed in a window syndrome. I don't think there's a parent in this room, I have a 17 and a 21 year old, I don't think that there's a parent in this room who can't say the kids that are being raised today, and we're all good parents, they're entitled and they're spoiled, and that's, you know, this is what we got. I mean, and, and I'm, I'm guilty, you know? They're getting cell phones at 10. But when they're drinking alcohol, and that much alcohol, it, it you know? Yeah, I can't wrap my head around it, because I'm not how we were brought up, so. They're drunk, that's the problem. Yeah. I was drinking. But I don't know why. This don't just, like that it's, just it's a different level, and I and I hear it all over the, I really do. It's, yeah. it's, 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 sure. Okay, so here it is. I don't have information, because our graphics department, they're printing machines, so I have all of these nice little cards and brochures. I have a bunch of cards. <coughs> this works ideally. I can come out and talk at a big safety meeting. <coughs> ideally, this works in smaller, smaller circles, okay? If you're willing to host a little informational, I'll come out and talk to a few of your neighbors. And, and I, I don't, you know, I, I really want this to work. I don't want the baseball bats, I can tell you. Oh, let's um, bring the bat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <my God. laughs> I really am. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, you know what? People spanking worked at one time. It doesn't work anymore. You know, now they're calling the cops on us for, you know, spanking. You know, so spanking doesn't work anymore. That worked back then. That's why we behaved, right? So things are different, entirely different. So we've got to figure out different ways to sort of deal with this. And, you know, I'll just throw one thing out and then I'm going to leave. But, you know, I was thinking that, um, and I don't know if bars do this, you know, because I'm not out at 2 o'clock, last call, 2 o'clock, lights go on at a bar. Do they do, you know, do they do they make notifications, you know, patrons, it's time to leave when you're walking home? Could you please be quiet? I, I mean, I don't I don't I just like again. You know what? Is there you know, I'm just thinking in different ways. Is there no I don't is this is this signage that can be posted? This is an age. Excuse me. Hi. They're actually I've seen it I've seen it in two places so far, and I've been saying this for years that the business owners in the North End, you need to go to the Chamber of Commerce. You need to go to the Chamber of Commerce in New York City, in Lower Manhattan, and all those little tight neighborhoods that look just like ours, almost every single bar reminds you, which sometimes can be quite useful, let me tell you, reminds you that you're on your way home. <coughs> like, some of them are cute. They'll say, like, time, you know, keep the inside voice on the outside. Yeah, you know, something like nice that. Right. Um, and there's, it's just, it, it always reminds you. I can't remember where I saw it last. I want to say Brico, but I know it wasn't. But I saw two places in the North End that now have that. 
And that really does make a what terrific a difference. It it's a sign, sign on your way out of the out of the bar venue or restaurant or club that says something like, please respect the neighborhood so we can stay open for your pleasure, or inside voices outside, or don't wake up anyone you wouldn't want to get woke up. Maybe the transportation department can look at, I mean, they had signs on, um, around the, and they have them on the public street garden too, about, um, about leaving valuables in your car. They were very kind of innocuous and very nice because we didn't want to scare off people that were coming in. But maybe a sign that says, this is our neighborhood. Could you please be respectful? I mean, I'm just thinking, uh, you know, you kind of have to think out of the box a little bit. Um, but I, I would love to work with all of you, any of you. And, and really, again, I will say it, it works. Neighbors who are involved, who are calling, who are communicating with each other, and everybody's in the know, like the problem properties, you know? Um, it, 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 it really does work. Yeah, you have to take a really we don't have problem properties where I'm located, yeah. um, and none of my neighbors. You know, it, the disorderly conduct is to a horrible language from you know two o'clock until three thirty. You know, so how do you call? You know, why would I? I it would serve no purpose if I got together with my neighbors on Fulton Street because it's a random situation. You know. But I'm suggesting that. But I'm suggesting that if you hear it, and immediately call, and then you make a call to your neighbor, and they all call. And I'm telling you, you have a greater chance of more people. We need the neighborhood watch meetings to be in a room like this, though, right? Not in someone's house. Yeah, we all live in the If anybody's interested in forming a peace vote, yeah. she's going to leave her car. Yes. And um, some of you may be interested. If you are, please take advantage of Carolyn said she'd come out and work with you. Uh, and you, you might learn something that you haven't thought about before or whatever. You know. Thank you very so, much. So, point, but I'll leave them up here. I took a step. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. They, you know, they do as much work as they possibly can. I mean, I can forward that information to them. I mean, we can take bits and pieces from a lot of different towns because our noise audience, to be quite honest with you, it doesn't, it doesn't cut it for me. And, and I agree that we need to have more. You know, our fines need to be increased, no question. But the problem property task force, I mean, since I've been working for Sal six years, we've been doing it for about five. It's been a little more than four. It works. 443 Hanover Street was like the House of Horrors across the street from my house. And I have had no problems with 443 in a long time. And if you give me an address, and it's an address that is constantly giving you problems, I can guarantee you that either they will be there, if they don't have a, if they're on the roof, and there's no roof deck, or if they have a roof deck and you don't think they should be on the roof, ISD will go check. If they don't have a roof deck, they'll, they'll have to remove their, they'll, they'll be required to remove the roof deck. It's happened. It has happened. If, if they put their trash out the wrong way, you call, let me know what property is, and it's the same people. It's the same people. The reality is, I can tell you the names, and I'm not going to, and you're gonna be like, no kidding. It's the same landlords, and it's the same addresses over and over again. And at some point, I, I'm gonna, personally, these young students and these young professionals, they're not gonna get me to move out of the North End, but I'm never leaving. And I'm, I'm, and I'm I'm gonna refuse to move because someone's gonna make some noise across the street from my house. And I never called 911 in my life till I started working for Sal. But I can tell you that going to the Brown Property Task Force every month on the third Tuesday, I get there at 845, there's someone from Instructional Services, there's someone from the Boston Police Department, there's someone from Suffolk University, there's someone from um, Emerson University, someone from Aaron's office, and there's someone from Councilor Ross's office. And we put the list together the best we can. But if you don't give us addresses, we can't we can't fall through and we do screw up sometimes, Marie, and I I, I know we, we I felt bad because here she is trying to do the right thing and calling on properties and they sent her a letter. And I apologize to you and I apologize to you if you got a letter. And and I and I and I understand, I understand it. And believe me, we don't send it to like this naughty list. 182 Endicott Street, their NG. It, it's, we just, we kind of file it in-house amongst the group. It doesn't go to ISD, it doesn't go to the mayor's office. I mean, I know maybe you Google this, the internet's a crazy place, but um, you don't get on this list that's like a blacklist. So don't think that your, your property is, is uh, you know, is gonna be have a black mark next to it, that's, that's not the case. 
And, and I'll have them send you a letter back saying we apologize if we did send you a letter. Five and the whole lot then. Mine's on the list. I'm going to get it off the list. Thank All right. you. Stephen, you keep saying contact us specifically. You can contact our office. You Sal's can contact office. Sal's office. You can okay, what's the telephone <laughs> number so six, everybody has six, it? 635 3200. That's Sal Lamartina, Council Lamartina. So that's for problem property. And if it's a not that address, I'm going to tell you, I have a list. I have like a mass list. I know the order of every address in the not that. <laughs> well, I'd like you to sit down with the community groups and go through that list with us because it's important for the community to be able to make decisions that reflect the fact that a landlord is a good landlord or a bad landlord, and that will help us make those decisions. And I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes we call a landlord two, three times, some of them, like, uh, they, you know, they like they don't know what to do. They get horrified. And some of them, they don't care. I'm going to be honest with you. Some of them don't care. Of course some of them don't care. So. They're all 25 all us. They're right. I don't know. Find them a thousand bucks. Marie, you know something? A thousand dollars. That was a hundred dollars. Even a thousand dollars to some of them. It's the cost of doing business in this country. That's what they're spending on the freaking beer. No. Two fifty. Two fifty. Folks, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We appreciate it. Thank you.